what you're trying to communicate is that um, private blockchains are insecure by design. I, I mean, blockchains that are built within the banks. Okay, I agree with that. But we can take another software uh, that is being used, I, I mean, uh, as example, like open source projects, okay? So, uh, like HTTP server, let's take uh, Nginx or Apache. It's being used by big corporations like Google, Oracle, whoever, including banks that have a lot of uh, private information. And so what prevents the banks from uh, taking open source grown copy of the Bitcoin code and launching it inside? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, what stops them. I think here's the problem. What happens if you take Apache and you install it in a bank and you put it behind an intranet and you use it internally? I'll tell you what happens. You fall behind on the patches. You stop doing vulnerability tests. You stop exposing it to external vulnerability tests that you didn't order, that just came your way. Okay, so the and as you do that, it gets denatured. It gets weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker until eventually you're running Apache, but it's three versions behind. It's vulnerable to anything, and someone comes in, pricks through the bubble, breaks through the perimeter, and takes that Apache for a ride. Um, and that's because you weren't under pressure to live in the wild. And when the pressure goes away, so do the standards. I would be happy to see Bitcoin as. A the one world currency, and you probably know that I've also been working towards this direction during the last five years or so. But meanwhile, we have big banks and corporations uh, existing within the countries. And Google is a good example of like using a lot of open source software and using it properly, right? Do you agree with that? Yes, so and most of their stuff runs pretty much out there. So it while uh, this, in, in, while we have not yet shifted to like completely decentralized anarchist like picture of world with only one currency, we will have the banks and uh, Bitcoin solves some problem for them. I mean, private blockchain solves uh, problem of synchronizing synchronizing transactions between the branches, like not losing transactions and so on. So they they have a choice either to like not solve this problem or try to apply this uh, solution? They have a lot more choices than that. I mean, just today, Greg was talking about Liquid, which is a sidechain for doing exactly that between exchanges. Now, where are exchanges today? Today, they run a MySQL database that stores entries for the account value of every customer. We saw what happened with Willybot and Gox with that particular issue. Right? This is an incremental improvement. Now, how does that differ from a permissioned ledger? Well, the main difference is that if you think Citibank is going to run their permissioned ledger on internet connected machines and open to everyone to scrutinize, you're sorely mistaken. What they're going to do is they're going to hide it behind a tall wall and they're going to run it among their five, six, seven, eight bankly friends. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to mean that that software is going to be weak and it's going to get weaker because all of the lessons we're learning in the wild won't get applied there until a whistleblower runs a little Trojan and malleates the transactions of their running exchange and uh, then they're going to have a bit of a problem. Okay, I got your idea. What I was trying to say is that as long as big institutions still exist, they will h hold some amount of private information inevitably about their customers, right? And they, since blockchain solves some problem for them, they will, they will be using it. And they really have a choice to either use open source developments like launch a copy of Ethereum within their network or try to build something known. Uh, so we'll have a two like worlds of uh, blockchains again like commercial blockchains built by Microsoft and open source blockchains built by open source community and both will be used by large organizations it's not like yeah absolutely I mean we are going to live in a thank you we are going to live in a world with a lot of diversity we are going to have completely closed systems that are permissioned ledgers that have so little decentralization functionality that effectively all they are is three-phase commit on top of a database with audit logs. And instead of having audit logs in a log file, they have audit logs based on Merkle trees and hashes. So that's not innovation. That's 20-year-old technology 
um, applied in a slight twist to what they're doing now. And on the other end of the scale, you're going to have completely open systems, open source systems, you're going to have sophisticated cryptography, and we're mostly going to be living on that end. Now, if that's the environment and that's the competitive landscape, um, that's great, <laughs> I mean, uh, because that's an environment in which not only can we win with Bitcoin and with other technology, or rather, it's not a matter of winning. It's a matter of building robust solutions that have use and value for people all around the world that change the world. That's something we can do. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm not worried about competing against the Microsoft blockchain. <laughs>